To write the nuclear equations for radioactive decay, you are going to need your reference table. It gives you a list of several different radioactive isotopes, as well as their half-lives, which we'll talk about later, and their decay mode. So there are several different ways that a particular radioactive isotope can decay. If you flip over and look at table O, it gives you what each of those things mean. So this little symbol here is the Greek letter alpha. The alpha particle is essentially the nucleus of a helium atom. It's made up of two protons and two neutrons. So the bottom number is a two for the two protons. The top number is a four for the mass number, which is the two protons plus the two neutrons. The beta particle is essentially an electron, sort of. So it's got the symbol of an electron, and we've got the negative one for the charge of the electron, kind of like the atomic number is the positive charge on the nucleus of an atom, and a mass of zero. Um, gamma radiation is just energy. There's no mass or charge, so we've got those two little zeros there. It also gives you the symbol for a neutron, for a proton, and for a positron. A positron is kind of like a positively charged electron. It has a charge of positive one and a mass of zero. So you'll see that the symbols for the beta particle and the positron are very similar. Similar. The beta particle is the Greek letter beta with a negative sign. The positron is the Greek letter beta with a plus sign. So if we come over here, we are going to write the equation for the radioactive decay of francium-220. First, we need to figure out what type of decay that is. So if we come over here, we've got francium-220, and it tells us it undergoes alpha decay. So that tells us that one of those products is going to be the alpha particle. And the alpha particle has a little four up top and a two on the bottom. When you're writing nuclear reactions, the sum of the subscripts on the left has to equal the sum or sorry, superscripts on the left, has to equal the sum of the superscripts on the right. So 4 plus what gives me 220? That would be 216. And now we need to do the same thing with the subscripts. The sum of the subscripts on the left equals the sum of the subscripts on the right. It doesn't tell us what that subscript is for francium, but we know that those subscripts are the atomic numbers. So if you go to your periodic table and look up francium, francium is atomic number 87. So we can fill that in even though it wasn't given to us. And then 87 is 2 plus 85. So I know the bottom of my other product needs to be an 85. Now for this one, since we know it's 85, we can look on our periodic table and atomic number 85 is a T. So this is the equation for the nuclear, or the nuclear equation for the radioactive decay of francium-220 emitting an alpha particle, which we can tell it does by looking at table N, and then we have the daughter product that is produced as well. If we look at gold 198, on table N, we can see that gold 198 undergoes beta decay. So I know that one of my products is going to be the beta particle. And if I look at the beta particle, again, it has a zero on the top and a negative one on the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the alpha particle. 198 equals 0 plus 198. And then we're going to go to the periodic table and find the atomic number for gold, which is 79. And 79 equals negative 1 plus what? Be very careful with this. The negatives, people tend to have a little bit of an issue with, I think, just when they're working a little bit too quickly. Negative 1 plus 80 is equal to 79. So atomic number 80 
is Hg. So whether it's alpha decay, beta decay, positron decay, or, or anything else, the sum of the superscripts has to be the same on both sides. The sum of the subscripts has to be the same on both sides. Calcium 37. Again, looking at table N. We can see that calcium 37 undergoes the little beta with a plus sign, so positron decay. So beta symbol, again, looking at table O, that positron is a plus one on the bottom, a zero on the top. And then looking up the atomic number of calcium, the atomic number of calcium is 20, so 20 on the bottom here. 20 equals 1 plus 19. 37 is 0 plus 37. And atomic number 19 is K. The last one that we're going to do is going to be electron capture, which is not shown in table N, but beryllium-7 is one of the things that will undergo electron capture. And it's going to work in the same way as what we've already done. So the electron is going to be absorbed by the um, isotope. So it's a reactant. Um, if we look on table O, again, it gives us the symbol for um, the electron is essentially the beta particle, so it's the same symbol with a negative 1 on the bottom for the charge, a 0 on the top for the mass. And then we're going to do the exact same thing with beryllium with the superscripts on the left and the right, 7 plus 0 equals 7. Beryllium, when we look up its atomic number, is 4. And 4 plus negative 1 is 3. And 3 is the element lithium. So again, the sum of the subscripts on the left equals the sum of the subscripts on the right. Sum of the superscripts on the left equals the sum of the superscripts on the right. So for any nuclear reaction, you need to make sure when you separate the reactants and the products, if you add up all the subscripts of the reactants, they have to equal the subscript of all the pro the subscripts of all the products. If you add up all the superscripts of the reactants, they have to add up to the sum of all the superscripts of the products as well.